Well, wasn't that some nice music? Here I'm going to show you just some parts that I used to uh, build this hydroponic system. There's a battery, you've seen a pump there, tape, the solar panel of course, chemicals, expensive, yes. Some of the stuff I didn't even use, I bought too much, which was kind of a waste. The seed starting kit, good for next year, is on sale. Um, pH tester. I'm just using 4 inch uh, drainage pipe and uh, drilled some holes in the top, capped off either end. And you can see in here, I already got one of the fittings screwed in to the bottom. That's where the pump's going to pump in the water and fill it up. And, uh, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. The first time I did that, it sprayed everywhere, so I had to cover it with that. I'm just testing the pump here. It turns on, and you can see the water filling up. It fills up really quick. Uh, that, that drainage pipe came in 10 foot length, so I decided cut it in five foot and I was just going to use the f one five foot length but I see how well it pumps so I decided I'd end up using both five foot lengths and you can see when I turn the pump off that the water will drain from the pipe back into the reservoir just by its own so that's that but it will need uh, an overflow to stop it from over when it over when it pumps too much you can't you don't want it spilling out everywhere so you put in an overflow You'll take a look at that later on, and it drains back into the reservoir. Mm, the timer system to operate the pump. Originally, I thought I could do it with something like that, but that's a 120-volt timer, and I'm running a 12-volt system. So that wouldn't work. Even though the current's going through now, the power isn't enough to actually get the, for the timer to function. So my solution is here. These are thermostats, and they work with uh, 12 volt systems. So that's what I'm using to turn on and off everything. Here's the fan. You'll see I'll turn down the temperature to cool it. You'll hear a click, bunk, and then uh, the fan will turn on. So I'm going to have fans in my hydroponic greenhouse that I'm going to build for it. And then the other thermostat will operate the pump. But unfortunately, with this thermostat, I only get four settings per day. I can program too. And uh, here you'll hear click and the pump will turn on. Four per day that I can program it to. And so that means only two feed cycles per day. So I might break down and actually buy a 12 volt timer even though they are expensive. But there you can see that that's all working. And the same thing to shut it off. I turn off the heater and it shuts off the fan and everything works. Here's uh, just another look at it. There's the second five foot length of four inch. There's a little splitter on that connection. So the pump will now fill up both tubes with water. And uh, yeah, it worked pretty good. You can see that one's filling, the other one's filling. This one's draining right now because I don't have uh, the overflow properly in place and yeah. Works like a charm. And then I got that guy at Walmart, just the wireless remote uh, thermometer, so I can tell what the temperature is in there. Everything drains, everything pumps right, so it's all looking good. Here I'm in the garage, I'm going to build a little stand for the tubing. And uh, just notched it out there with the jigsaw. So and then I threw some legs on it, just like that. Cut them at 30 degrees. Makes a good little stand. So I'll do two of those. And then brace them together with a 2x4. And presto, you have a little stand for your 4-inch tubes. Put right on there, just like that. Nice and easy. Then I moved it to the deck. There's my solar panel. This is going to be a solar uh, powered operation with a little 12 volt rechargeable battery. Hopefully that that'll be enough power for it to work. But you know, I'm testing it with a five gallon bucket. The five gallon was pretty much the perfect amount. Um, it doesn't drain the reservoir completely, but it's a good amount for for these tubes. So that's what I'd be running. You can see the drainage is hooked up together. You can hear it draining out when it overflows goes back into the reservoir and the pump keeps on cycling the water through 
works pretty good there it is in there you can see the overflow each one there's it all drains out uh, there's all the little trays in it with the clay pellets they're good media for growing hydroponic stuff. You can use gravel, sand, newspaper, sawdust. I mean, there's a lot of things I guess you could use, but these seem to work the best. Uh, like I said, I was going to put this hydroponic system inside a miniature greenhouse, so I'm going to build it out of a base out of 2 by 6s make it 4 by 8 wide. And uh, so that's what I was doing, and then I braced the corners with some 2 by 4 and that's going to be the base for the greenhouse and I'm going to do build pretty much the same structure out of 2x4s and that's going to go over top of that base. There's You can see the tubing I'm going to use to make the hoop house to make a nice round arch over the top. It's a little flimsy and I was kind of had my doubts at first. I mean it's cheap tubing so I was trying to make use for it and there it is together. It worked fine. I mean I put some braces in top and the sides and it's actually ended up a lot more solid than I had thought so I was pretty happy with that and just anchored uh, nothing's really drilled to it I mean I can pop those tubes out anytime so if I want to dismantle it before winter or something it's not too hard here's the wiring here's the fans uh, I ended up getting a couple bigger computer fans and then there's a fan in the middle and so when it gets too hot in there the fans kick in even though I don't think they'll cool it too well at least you'll get some circulation in there and probably take some hot air out as well. They do move quite a bit. Covered it with plastic. And uh, fans are going. So it was pretty quick and painless. Uh, mounting the plastic was a bit of a challenge. I, wanted, I didn't want to staple it for it to rip, so I ended up getting these pieces of wood there that you see. Rolled the plastic in it a few times and then anchored it with a screw. And on the sides, I just took the same tubing that I did to use the hoops and cut it down the middle, little sections cut down the middle and clamped it to the side. So that worked pretty good. And here's the hydroponics in there, the solar panel. Still kind of testing things out. And uh, this is my reservoir, the five gallon bucket that I buried in the ground. Keeps it a little bit cooler and uh, drains easier. Here's some chemicals, some of the chemicals I was using to grow. It's about $80 worth of chemicals. pH up, pH down, a little pH testing kit. Here's the reservoir full up with the chemicals added. You can see I covered uh, all the clear tubing and added some tomato plants in there. Uh, keep the light out so that uh, no algae or anything grows in there. From what I know, I mean, I, this is my first time doing this. So I have no idea what the hell to expect. There's a little control center. And at 1 o'clock, uh, things are supposed to... Well, it has its feeding cycles. And here's the hinge. This is why I built two frames. I put hinges on the back. So instead of having to lift up the plastic or lift up the whole greenhouse, it's just easy to put a hinge. You can open it up if it gets way too hot, air it out. Uh, easy access to get in there and kind of tend to your plants. Here it is, 1 o'clock. Click, turns on the pump, and things are working just fine. Everything pumping, draining, filling. So. Uh, uh, a couple tomato plants. But I'm just testing this out to see if it'll actually work. Probably end up killing these plants. Who knows? Maybe I won't. It won't be a waste. But I think it's pretty neat. It's a little self-sufficient system. As long as it doesn't blow away. Here you can look at see the clamps on the side. It's just the same pipe, just clamped around. There's a fan. You can see inside there's a third fan in the middle and then another fan out. So it's all uh, one direction. The and that's about it. In a couple weeks, I might make another video and do a little update on this to see, show you guys if it's actually working. Uh, so I decided I'd just list some materials and costs of the project. And originally, I thought I'd be able to do it for really cheap. But one thing I realized when you start a project like this is how quickly just small things seem to add up. And then when you take into consideration... Uh, buying the chemicals and I guess the thermostats for the timers were a huge expense. It was actually pretty expensive. Maybe that's where most of the cost was, but really it just adds up. So if you're thinking of doing it yourself, uh, 
you're gonna want a bit of cash, I guess, on hand. For me, I guess it costed 403, uh, roughly, to do this thing, and uh, that's quite a bit of money.